Albert Bergeret here, and once again, our Patterbite selection from New York Gilbert and Sullivan Players' Patterpalooza Project defies the typical perception of a patter song. In the Mikado, local official Pishtus is not the central comic character, yet his song is certainly reminiscent of the patter style. This lyric number, with its rich and complicated vocal line, is an unlikely candidate for our little list of patter songs. It does not introduce the character, nor contain a long, witty list, but it does provide the most important exposition of the show with three pattery verses. Here to tell us how the fictitious town of Titipu gets around the threat of an autocratic and frivolous ruler is Nigast performer, choreographer, and associate director, David Oxier. Man, when he to rule our land began, resolved to try a plan whereby young men might best be steadied. So he decreed in words succinct that all who flirted leered or winked unless connubially linked should forthwith be beheaded, 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 should forthwith be beheaded. I expect you'll all agree that he was right to so decree. And I am right, and you are right, and all is right as right can be. You are right, and we are right, and all is right as right as right can be. And all is right as right can be. Right as right can be. Stern decree, you'll understand, cause great dismay throughout the land, for young and old and shy and bold were equally affected. The youth who winked a roving eye or breathed a non-canubial sigh was thereupon condemned to die. He usually objected, objected, objected. He usually objected. And you'll allow, as I expect, that he was right to so object. And I am right, and you are right, and everything is quite correct. You are right, and we are right, and everything is quite, is quite correct. And everything is quite correct. All is quite correct. And so we straight let out on bail a convict from the county jail whose head was next on some pretext condemned to be mown off and made him headsman for we said <laughs> who's next to be decapitated cannot cut off another's head until he's cut his own off his own off his own off until he's cut his own off. And we are right, I think you'll say, to argue in this kind of way. And I am right, and you are right, and all is right to Lurale. And you are right, and we are right, and all is right to Lurale. And you I are right, right, and we are right, and all. Say hello to David Oxier. Hi. Hey, everybody. I was kind of I was glad that we decided to do this number. Obviously, it kind of breaks the rules of being a powder song. I mean, I've normally thought of as one. And um, I actually think it's kind of one of the 
I think it's one of the best baritone arias in in jazz overall. I just I love the melody line. It's so rich. I love singing it. It fits right in the sweet spot of my voice. <laughs> so that's always good for me too. But um, the, this particular song, it, it, given um, you know the putting together of the new Mikado, I really enjoyed um, choosing this one because out of everything that we did in the sort of new concept of the Mikado, we we framed it right and then. I said, once we got into the world, we just did the show as it always is, right? But Gilbert's character becoming Pishtush and trying to explain how he knew this song and knew this story was one of the most fun things to put together. And having the book that we're like reading it right from a storybook. Uh, I was really glad you brought in the book so we could use it and, and, and we could act it out in that way. That's I've always appreciated David's ability to sell a number, too, and he does that very well in this particular number, even without the rest of the chorus around and everything. You think it's a little more intimate when you're doing it to a camera rather than trying to do it to the full chorus and the full theater? As stage actors, it's so hard to make the transition from stage performing to video performing, to to perform with literally no feedback coming from the audience, to to perform and, and remember to look at a camera instead of out into space. I mean, every everything about it is different. And we've all been doing that now, right? We started doing videos, like starting with the one that James created, the first uh, modern major parody that we did. It's like, it's a whole new world and we've kind of become accustomed to it. We've started to learn how to work in this way, but man, it is, it is a hard thing to get up and do one of these numbers to a camera instead of to an audience. Uh, Dave, tell me a little bit about how you came to be involved with this company. Yeah, so, well, you know, I came, I, I, uh, if I remember, <laughs> I feel so old now, I don't remember, was it 1992? Nigas was my first audition in New York. My very first audition, fresh out of college. I remember did that John Aston Pinafore as, you know, featured dancer in the middle, dancing sailor. <laughs> yeah, dancing sailor right behind John Aston, I might note, because of your height. <laughs> it's literally my most famous picture ever, is that picture yes. <laughs> from the papers. Um, yeah, and that's, I mean, that's how I joined the company. But, you know, I was already a Gilbert and Sullivan, I won't say a fanatic, but I was. it was the music that I enjoyed the most, as much as I loved all my Broadway and all my off-Broadway you know, listening to the, the, the Pirates of Penzance album that I literally on vinyl checked out from the library when I was in high school and played it over and over again and played Taran Tara over and over again. What do you think about Patterson? What is it about Patterson that makes it so iconic? You know, it is, it allows it allows so much information to get out in a short span of time, right? And for me, one of the things I always liked about how you uh, musically direct shows is that it's all about the lyrics. Whatever it is that's going on, every moment, every musical innuendo that you choose always relates back to the lyrics somehow. And so patter songs basically are the definition of being all about the lyric. This particular song, it's that whole, you know, it's got that rich melody line. It's like this rich, uh, colorful baritone aria, but it's still all about the words, every single thing. And the way that you musically conduct this number, which is different than I've heard on any other recording or seen in any other production, does so much to get the story across. And this is a background storytelling song. Well, I think we've covered a lot of territory here, Dave. That's great. Keep calm and patter on, everybody. There you go. That's the, that's the right message. The Mikado was the first Gilbert and Sullivan that I ever saw. I was seven, and my friend's grandmother took us to see it. And my mother sang me some of the music before, and we talked about the characters. I grew up without a television. Any theater that I saw drew me right onto the stage, and I was so enamored of the entire production. Of course, Pishtush's song is one of the first things that you hear. It's the third number in the story. And he speaks first, which I was thrilled by because up until that point it had all been singing and then he sang and I, I can still remember the magic of being in the theater and seeing the Mikado and coming home and telling about it and drawing pictures of all the characters and thinking about it over and over and over again any live theater was like that for me 
So I asked for the recording, which I got and played over and over and over again and sang it, sang along to it. And fortunately, my birthday is six months after Christmas. By then I had seen Pirates of Penzance and I got the recording. And so it continued. Whatever I had seen live, I got the recording. Eventually I saved up some money and bought some scores and started playing some of it and singing it with my friends, singing it in other people's living rooms, and that's how I became a Gilbert and Sullivan fan. Thank you for joining us for this episode of the Patterpalooza Project, an exploration of Gilbert and Sullivan patter songs and the people who perform them. On behalf of New York Gilbert and Sullivan players, I'm Albert Bergeret, and we hope to see you next time for another classic patter bite. And we are right, I think you'll say, to argue in this kind of way. And I am right, and you are right, and all is right to Lurale. And you are right, and we are right, and all is right to Lurale.